let's talk about parallel circuits. And what I want to do is start off with just comparing the two. So we're going to look at series. We'll look at parallel. I already did that. Let's do this. Save some writing. So if we look at series and we look at parallel, they look different from each other. And what happens is series has a single path for those for the current to travel. Then I can go back and forth as I needed. All right. So series and parallel are structured differently. Series circuits allow a single path for the current to travel along. So the current comes out of the battery. It goes through that one and that one and that one and, and back. In both situations, whatever voltage you have here, when you get to the end, you don't have any voltage left. In this one, the current travels through each of the bulbs. The same current goes through each of them. In parallel, that we're talking about this week, the current comes out of the battery. It comes up here. You have a lot of current coming out. Some of it goes over here. Some of it goes up, and some of that goes over here, and some of it goes up, and then goes over here. And so what happens is the current only goes through one of these and it has to drop all of the voltage there before it comes back. So the current starts here with your total volt, your total current, splits, 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 comes back together and the total current goes back to the battery. In the process, remember that when the current gets back to the battery, it can't have any voltage left. So when the current splits and the part that goes here will drop all of its voltage here, so, because that'll be the only resistor that that part of the current encounters. Some of it comes up here. The current that crosses here will drop all of the voltage here because that's the only resistor that's encountered here. And then the part that comes up here will cross here. It only encounters this part piece of resistance. And so it will go back. It'll drop all of the voltage there and then go back that way. So in here, your current is the same through all of them, but your voltage is different. In here, your current is different through all of them, but your voltage will be the same through all of them. So those are kind of the, your biggest comparisons. I'm gonna take this part off and look at the, the rest of this here. So in this one, this just summarizes what I was just saying. The current is the same throughout. So if you have 0.2 amps coming out of the battery, there's 0 0.2 there, 0 0.2 there, 0 0.2 there, and all the way back. The voltage will vary. So let's say you have nine volts coming out of the battery here. You might have four volts that drop there, three volts that drop there, two that vol volts that drop there for a total of nine. But you'll use up all nine spread across these three. Here the voltage stays the same. So the current will split, but the voltage stays the same. So if I have nine volts coming out here, I'm going to drop nine volts right there and go back. But then some current will come up here. I'll drop nine volts there and go back. Some current will come up there. I'll drop nine volts there and then go back. So what happens when you're dealing with parallel is generally you'll get a lot more current coming out of the battery as you're doing that. So the current splits, but the voltage stays the same here. And I'll talk more about this equation in a, mo in a moment, but there's two different ways for solving for resistance. In series, you're just adding them up. As you're adding, as you are adding resistance, it's becoming more difficult for that current to go through. With parallel, you're doing one over. So one over RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. And I'll go into that more in a little bit, but what's happening is as you, as you add more paths, there's more opportunity for that current to go across. So you're actually going to be lowering the overall resistance that you have. Like I said, I'll show you that in a little bit. So these are the two things. I'm going to take this board down in a moment. So if you want to screenshot that, please do that. So um, now I want to focus specifically on parallel circuits. Then the parallel circuits have parallel circuits have multiple paths. for the current. And this week we're supposed, we're focusing, uh, try that again. We're focusing specifically on parallel circuits. We don't have any other pieces in with that. Next week we'll get into adding the other pieces with them. 
So you have two ways you can draw this. Well, lots of ways you can draw this, but the two main ones. Oh, let's use resistors. Why not? Would be like this. And a lot of times I use three. Three is just sort of a good number of like, yeah, we've got some here. You could draw it like this where you have R1, R2, R3, and then the voltage from your battery. You could take that same circuit and rotate it 90 degrees and draw it like this. Have it set up like that where you would have R1, R2, R3, and your voltage. The biggest thing is that when you have it set up, that you follow your current. And so if you take your current out of the battery and you have a place where it splits and some of it goes there and some of it goes there, you're probably going to have a parallel, a parallel component. Same thing here. It comes out here. Some of it can go there. Some of it can go down there. Again, you'll have parallel components here. And so there's, like I said, there's different ways to kind of set this up and see what you might have. Let's talk about the voltage drop. I've mentioned it that the voltage drop goes across here and it happens because of the current. And so let's talk, let's think about what happens if people drive from Wisconsin to Minnesota. So let's say we have Wisconsin over here and we have Minnesota over here. And a lot of people live in Wisconsin and drive over to Minnesota to work and then they drive back to Wisconsin at the end of the day. So if somebody is going to Minnesota, to, if they wake up in the morning in Wisconsin and they're going to work, they might, li they might listen to the radio and, or look on the TV or get online and look at traffic or something like that. And there's about three bridges that sort of work. There's um, Stillwater Bridge. There's one up at, um, like by Taylor's Falls. There might be another one somewhere in there. And so you have different paths you can get across. And let's say they live like here and work here. So it's not really going to matter what path they go on. Well, we can say that traffic is going across all three paths. Say, yep, morning traffic, traffic's going across all three paths. But that individual car can only pick one. The individual car isn't going across all three. And so we, while we have traffic going across all three paths, this car might get up and go across this path. Or it might go across this path. But whichever path that single car goes across is the only path it goes across. And that's kind of what we're talking about in the way that this goes. The other thing that happens is the voltage drop. Let's say, let's say a let's say a car makes a wish. This is terrible, but you wouldn't do this. But makes a wish every morning by throwing a penny over the bridge. They can't throw a penny over every bridge. They can only throw a penny over the bridge that they are on, and that's like your voltage drop. It can only drop the voltage on the one that they are on. So while this car goes across here, it's going to lose its penny there and go go to work without the penny. Um, other cars, if they all did that, would have would drop it here, would drop it there. Um, but it's over the bridge that it's on. So traffic can go over all three, but the car you're in only goes over one. Same thing here with this. Current comes out of the battery. Some of the current goes here. The current that goes over here only goes over here. So it only encounters this resistor and drops all of its voltage there and goes back empty. So if I have this set up like this, so I have my current comes out of the battery, this current goes over here, this would mean that I would drop all 9 volts there and then go back empty. But not all of the current goes there. Some of the current, a different part of the current, continues up here. It would drop all 9 volts on that one because that's the only resistor that it encounters and then goes back empty. The, the currents combine again and head back to the battery. And the same thing here. Some of the current will go up here, cross over here, 9 volts, and then go back to the battery. And so you'll have a certain amount. Let's say you had, I don't know, let's say you have 6 amps coming out of here. It's a lot of current. Let's say you have 6 amps. So we might have 3 amps that go here, 2 amps that go there, 1 amp that goes there. They all come back together, and you would have 6 amps going back in. So however you have it set up, whatever you're looking for, and the different pieces that you have, the current splits here and goes across each path, the voltage drops equally. Now let's go back to the, the situation of, we'll talk about resistance with this, and the situation of Minnesota and Wisconsin. 
So someone wakes up in Wisconsin in the morning, they listen to it and they're, they listen to the traffic or they see the traffic and there's, there's a huge backup here. They're either going to go down here or they're going to go up there. Now, are there some cars going across it? Yeah. It's not as many. There's a huge resistance. There's a lot of traffic. There's something that's making it slow down. So there's still some that goes across there, but more will go here and there because they can go more freely. Same thing happens with this. Whichever one has the highest resistance will have the lowest current going through it. You'll still have some current going through it, but they'll have the lowest amount. Whichever one has the least resistance will have the most current going through it because there's nothing, there's not as much to hold it up. So this is our general background in what we're looking at for parallel circuits. I'm going to erase this part and we're going to do one and talk it through as we do that. So if you need to screenshot this, go ahead. Let me take this down. So let's set this up. We're going to put on here, we'll have a, I'm going to just use two resistors just for keeping it a little bit simple. We'll have a 48 ohm resistor, a 24 ohm resistor, and let's use, I don't know, let's use a 12 volt battery. Last year, last hour, I used a nine volt battery. I didn't like the numbers very much. So we'll try this, Let's see if this works better. So the first thing we'll do when you're setting up a parallel circuit, I'm going to give you the steps sort of like I did for what we did for series is you'll calculate your total resistance. And this one isn't quite as important in this one because you can still get your current across each. We know the voltage drop will be 12 volts on both of them so we can get current. But usually just out of practice, you want to know what the total current, what the total resistance is and what the total current is. So we'll calculate the total current. And to do that, we use the equation of 1 over RT. In this case, will be 1 over 24 plus 1 over 48. And solving this takes a couple of steps and a couple of things to keep in mind. So what I usually do is I put this in. And I just put it in my calculator as is, and I keep the decimal that I have. So I'll say 1 divided by 24, and then plus 1 divided by 48. And when I do that, I get this decimal, 0 0.0625. That is not my resistance. That is equal to 1 over my resistance. And so to get the, my actual resistance, I have to take the inverse of each. So I'll take RT is equal to 1 over 0 0.0625. And when I do that, if you have the, the answer button on your calculator that you can just do 1 over answer, that'll usually work the best. This one I have specifically so it is nice and neat. So 0 0.0625, I get a nice neat number of 16 ohms. So we have 16 ohms here, nice and neat. Um, so what that means is the battery sees this as 16 ohms. Every time you're adding paths, you're making it easier for that current to go somewhere. And so when you set it up, the total resistance will always be a lower number than your lowest resistance here. So if I have 24 ohms here, I know that my total resistance will be lower than 24 ohms. If I have one ohm, my total resistance becomes lower than one ohm. It's super crazy. And there's times that's not necessarily beneficial because of the way things will go with that, but it can be possible. So here's our total resistance, 16 ohms. That means that the battery sees this whole thing as 16 ohms instead of 24 and 48. So I just want to show you physically for a moment what this looks like. So if I take my battery and I take and, and take my bulbs like I had last week. Last week we were talking about circuits that were in series and so the current would go in here, it would go through this bulb and then it would go through the next bulb and it would look something like this with two two bulbs. So you can see it, it's not crazy bright. It's bright but it's not crazy bright. What happens when I hook these up for series or for parallel is that I've got them tied together on both sides. So I like to call this the awkward 80s prom photo picture their hands around each other like 
draped over each other. Again, picture big hair, ugly tuxedo. It's a good thing. And when I do this, when I touch that leads to this, the current goes through this one and it goes through this one. So because it's carrying that, it sees this as a lower resistance as any bulb on its own. And you've got current going through both, it splits through both of them. So it ends up with a really, really bright bulb here. In fact, if I leave it on too long, the battery drains really quickly. And so um, with series, they're hol they're, you're holding them sort of like playing Red Rover. And so Red Rover, Red Rover, and you could put a whole line of bulbs and that would be in series. In parallel, you've got them all tied together here and all tied together here. So if I were to add a third, I'd tie it in just like it's there. If I add a fourth, I keep tying it in as it is there. And the more I do that, the lower the resistance becomes and the more current that's coming out of the battery. So if I tie this third one on here, tie this third one on here, dun, 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 something like that, something like that. Um, so you would still have them, um, the current would come in on this side, it could go through any of the three, and it would go out on the other side. Let's see if I can, they're not tying together really well, so let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, uh, come on, it wants to. Dude, <laughs> it doesn't want to work. So um, I'd have to tie them together a little better. So that's what we're looking at here. The first thing we're always going to do is to calculate for RT. With the lower resistance that we get, the, little, the lower total resistance, that's going to allow more current to come out. And remember, power is current times voltage. And so you're going to have more power coming out of each bulb for your, your parallel circuit than you are for your series. That's the first thing. The second thing then is calculate the total current. And this will be something that you'll check the next steps on. And so we'll say I, for a total current, we're gonna say I is V of the battery divided by RT. So I is V over R. And in this situation, it's the battery voltage divided by your RT that you got up here. So we'll take 12 volts divided by 16 ohms. Yep, and we get 0 0.75 amps. I like these numbers better. So we know that we have our battery sees this as 16 ohms. It's going to send out, the battery will send out 0.75 amps. Some of that is going to go through here. Some of that is going to go through there. If I had a third path, some of it would go through there. So the third thing I'm going to do is calculate the current through each resistor or through each path. So I'll calculate the current through each path. So I'll say I is equal to V over R. And remember the 12 volts comes out of the battery as it crosses here, it drops all 12 volts there because that's the only resistor that that piece of the current will hit. So I'll use 12 volts, and this time I'll use 24 ohms. 12 divided by 24 gives me 0 0.5 amps. So coming out of the battery, I have 0 0.75 amps. That comes up here. Through here, I have 0 0.5 amps. And then that 0 0.5 amps goes back to the battery. If I go up through the 48 ohm resistor, I equals V over R. So I still have a 12 volt drop because the current that comes up here has the 12 volts with it. It only encounters this resistor, so it drops all 12 volts there and then it goes back. So I have 12 volts divided by my resistance of 48 ohms. 12 divided by 48 gives me 0.25 amps. So coming up on that second path, I have come up here. I started off with 0.75 amps. 0.5 amps goes through the 24 ohm resistor. 0.25 amps goes through the 48 ohm resistor. 0.5 plus 0.25 gives me my 0.75. So if I have that plus that, if I add those two together, it brings me to the 0.75 amps.
So it splits and then come, comes back together. Whenever you add the current along of each of those paths, if you add that current back into, um, if you add those two currents together, it should always be the total current that you have. Last thing then is to um, put that together with uh, calculate your power. And when you calculate your power, you can either do that by, um, by each resistor or total, depending on what's being requested. And we'll go ahead and do that here. If we do it by each resistor, we say P equals IV. So I'll take the current here of 0 0.5 amps times 12 volts. So the power for this one would be um, 6 watts. If I do that over here, say I equals, or sorry, P equals IV, I'll have 0 0.25 amps times 12 volts. And so here I would have three watts. If I did this as a total, if I did total power, I could say P equals IV. My total current is 0 0.75 amps times 12 uh, volts. And I get nine watts. And again, that total current there, or that total power, if I add up these two powers, I get the same. So 6 plus 3 equals 9. So this one's for total. Again, depending on what is being asked for. So if you want to screenshot that, go ahead. And then I'm going to summarize kind of those steps without all the, the writing in it, just so you have that. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So if you haven't screenshotted it yet, please do that. Take this off. All right. So solving parallel circuits. Solving parallel circuits, the first thing you do is calculate RT, and you do that by 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, however many resistances that you have. Second thing is calculate total current. And you'll say I equals V of the battery over RT. That's the total current coming out of your battery. And then you'll calculate the individual currents on each path. So you'll say I equals V over R1 for that one, then whatever. So each one we'll say, I'll say just I equals V over R for each circuit or for each path. And then once you have that, calculate power. Uh, either individual or the total. And that holds true for series circuits as well. So when you're calculating power, you can calculate total, you can calculate individual. It all depends on what you have for just what's being asked for. It's still I times V. If you're using your total current, your total voltage, then you're using, then you're calculating total, total power. Oh, excuse me. If you're calculating on the individuals, you can do that as well. But either way, the individuals should add up to be the whole as well. So go ahead and screenshot that. Any questions on any of this? I know I just went through a lot of stuff.